Hi there, Steve Arderburn here, and I want to join you every day at this time for a few days, um, hopefully a time of encouragement, uh, maybe reset your thinking if things have become um, extremely difficult, or if not, just something enjoyable for you. Um, I was preaching a couple of weekends ago, and uh, I was telling a story about Solomon and I. We were talking about one of the uh, worst ways a person could die, and I'll tell you where it came from. Uh, we were looking at an ice cube, and of course, if you know anything about um, um, Alfred Hitchcock, he always said that the um, perfect... Oh, dear. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me shut this off. So, anyway, um, Hitchcock said the perfect murder weapon was an icicle. And so we were talking about, well, the worst way to die at home would be if you choked on an ice cube. Because, you know, um, your last thoughts would be melt, which is not very profound. And then uh, if you died they'd find you and the ice cube would have melted and there you'd be and they wouldn't know how and so they would probably say well he's really well hydrated but it looks like he died of natural causes so anyway i don't want that for anybody so if you're alone and you're uh, eating ice you need to be really really careful because it's not your time hopefully well anyway um that's my poor attempt at humor during the midst uh, of a really tough crisis. Now, let me tell you what I know uh, from our radio show and from other people that I've emailed with and texted and talked with. This whole uh, coronavirus thing came about at a really crummy time for a lot of people. And, you know, we just can't assume that this was um, like business as usual and then a crummy thing happened. I know that some people uh, you got a really crummy diagnosis uh, or you already are struggling with uh, autoimmune issues and uh, financially you were already stretched and this uh, maybe you're going to be out of a job or you already are and it's a tough time. Well, the only thing that that I can say that I know for sure is that you're going to be OK. Doesn't mean you're going to be the same, but I do think that that we could all. Uh, be assured that God's going to be there for us, even in a in a different way than maybe we ever dreamed. One of the things that I think is really important is not to obsess over the worst case um, in your personal situation. Uh, like in the nation, you could obsess over worst case, everybody gets the virus and more than you ever dreamed die. But a lot of people are really fighting hard and working hard so that the worst case in the country doesn't happen. And one of the things I've heard that is kind of encouraging is that none of the other healthcare systems in the world and the way this is played out has taken into account our healthcare system with a lot of brilliant people going to work to try to end this quicker or find a, a treatment quicker uh, than you could ever dream. I know uh, some of our best supporters, I know a couple, for instance, that are in a laboratory right now, New Life listeners and supporters, and they're working right now in their med tech company on how in the world uh, can we find a way to kill this virus. So uh, I don't think we're going to have a worst case scenario nationwide. It's not going to be pretty, but not worst case. But here's the thing. Rather than obsessing over the worst case, sometimes for me it's really helpful to think about what is my worst case and and could I survive that? Would I be okay? And I guess worst case for me is I would die. I'd get it and I would die. Um, and then I'd be in heaven. Um, but probably the worst case for me is that, well, we'd, we'd lose our house and cars and we'd end up in a small place, hopefully, that we could rent. But we'd be okay because we'd still have our faith and we'd still live in a country where we could start over. And so I don't want to obsess over that. But once I go down that road, what is worst case? Then I can say, okay, I can handle that. Now let's go make the best of what we've got. And making the best really does mean that I don't ignore the reality. But I also, I need to saturate my mind with the best stuff possible. And to me, that's God's word. Let me give you a scripture that I love. Isaiah 41 10 says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. 
Now, you either believe in God or you don't. And then if you believe in God, you either let God have your life or you don't. You either trust God or you don't. Well, I believe that when you look at this vast universe and you see that we're this most beautiful, wonderful planet, I believe God created the universe and I believe he created us specially for him and he wants to be part of our lives and he wants us to love him and he loves us. And when I read all of that, I believe it in scripture and, um, and I accept that. And so it really helps me to surrender into the reality of God, which is far more powerful than the reality facing us in this crisis. So I hope and pray you'll do all the things you need to do to protect yourself. You'll stay in touch with current things and what's going on nationally and locally. But you won't let that be the full extent of what saturates your mind and your heart and your spirit. That you'll let God's truth become a big part of what you focus on. Now, I had a question the other day come in, and I want to answer it. We didn't have time when I was on. Um, and it was this. It, it was kind of two-parter, and I'll handle each one. What if longtime Christians are more scared of catching the virus than God's promise of protection? Well, you know, um, if, if you were raised kind of in a fear-based uh, home and your childhood was full of fear, um, you don't just experience that. Your, your central nervous system experiences that and absorbs that. And then when some situation like this comes along, what other people might fear, uh, experience as concern, you might feel as deep deep uh, fear and uh, just might be you could say scared to death of something and so um, it's not just a lack of faith that we're more afraid of the virus than we have faith in God protecting us um, sometimes it's beyond a decision or even a conscious awareness of where that fear comes from so in me believing that God protects us, I don't believe he protects us from viruses. I believe that his protection is from hopelessness and his protection is from uh, despair. But um, and he'll comfort us and strengthen us. But I got to tell you, it is a scary virus. And I, I pray that no one will ever shame you for being afraid or being cautious with what you do. Because to me, that is we trust God, but we act responsibly in addition to just trusting God. We don't just say, well, God, you're going to take care of everything because that's not true. So if you're so obsessed in the fear that it isn't comforting to know that God's there for you, there's a reason to call 1-800-NEW-LIFE, call your local church, uh, do something online, watch some videos uh, get some kind of help with adjusting the way you think and feel so that you're not living in total despair. The other part of that question is, uh, what, if, what if dying from the virus is God's predetermined will uh, for a Christian? Could be. Uh, but we don't know that. So we sure do want to uh, stay healthy emotionally, spiritually, and, uh, and physically. And so then if it's our time, well, it's it's our time. And, um, you know, I'm ready, but I'm not going to volunteer to go. I've got a lot of things I want to do. Separate from all of that, no matter what you're feeling or experiencing, I just want to encourage you uh, that you could totally get out of your frame of mind, whatever it is, by reaching out and trying to help somebody else. That's either with a great encouraging FaceTime or a phone call, uh, some way, reach out and try to help some other people. And if you do that, I mean, it's just one of those things. You go serving somebody else and you stop obsessing over yourself. Well, one of the things that we've done over the past year is we've put together these great devotionals. And I want you to, uh, you can get this at newlife.com, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. But I want to read this first devotional for 100 Days of Peace to you. It says this, John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Here's the devotional. 
These are turbulent times, difficult days, when worries are easy to identify and peace may be a scarce commodity. But no times are too turbulent for God. If you sincerely desire the peace that passes all understanding, you'll find it in God. The familiar words of John 14, 27 remind us that Jesus offers us peace, not as the world gives, but as he alone gives. Have you found the genuine peace that can be yours through Jesus Christ, or are you still rushing after the illusion of peace and the illusion of happiness that the world promises but simply cannot deliver? This day, complete with its assortments of ups and downs, is a gift from the Creator. This day will contain many blessings. This day will provide quiet moments for prayer and for praise. And this day offers yet another opportunity to welcome the Father into your heart and to share His good news with the world. So honor Him and thank Him. It's the right thing to do in good times and in hard times, and it's the peaceful way to live. C.S. Lewis said this, God cannot give us a happiness and peace apart from himself because it's not there. There is no, there's just no such thing. Billy Graham said, Christ alone can bring lasting peace. Peace with God, peace among men and nations, and peace within our hearts. And Oswald Chambers said this, My peace I give unto you. It is a peace all over from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet, an irrepressible confidence. And if you want further reflection, you could pick up a, a Bible, Psalm 85, 8, or uh, Luke 2, 14, John 16, 33, Philippians 4, 7, and Colossians 3, 15. Now this devotional ends with today's prayer where it, it says here, Dear Lord, I will open my heart to you, and I thank you, God, for your love, for your peace, and for your Son. Now, I want to share these with you every day, and you could get a copy at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. But here's what else you could do. I put together, I've edited uh, 12 Bibles now, specialty and study Bibles, and the last one is called the Restoration Bible. And it's based on uh, the acronym RESTORE. And it is a great tool to get into God's Word, to read God's Word, and to bring in that process of restoration for you. And it's a great Bible to read as a devotional Bible and to use as a study Bible. Okay. Um, I'd just like to close by saying um, there is a world that was created by God. He knew everything that was going to happen long before He ever created it. That's who God is. Uh, and he's got this. And we'll get through this. And we'll look back and we'll, we'll think of the things we experienced and the pain that we suffered. Maybe, hopefully, we'll, exp we'll look back on the ways that we grew and the way God stretched us. If it gets to be too much, don't suffer alone. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Listen to the broadcast. NewLife.com is a place to hear it if you don't get it on radio. But don't struggle alone. Get some help uh, and just know this, that God, it doesn't say, Bible, Bible doesn't say God is a loving God. Yeah, he's loving, but it goes farther to say God is love. God is love. And if you're not experiencing that love during this difficult time, reach out to somebody and let them help you. Because God's love is the reason I'm doing what I'm doing right now. I care about you. I'm glad you joined me. Tell someone, someone about it. I'll be back here tomorrow, exact same time. See you then. Bye-bye.